How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy. And as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons. And folks, we're jumping right to the chase here because David Stearns is doing everything he can to make this Metropolitan roster the best it can be for the 2024 regular season as it officially begins this Thursday. I know you guys and gals are just as hyped up as I am, so make sure to let me know your hype down below as the regular season is almost upon us. We're coming at you with consistent content, as always. Even when I'm on location out of town for the weekend, the grind never stops because what we saw earlier today in David Stern's presser announced himself the Mets are making their final roster moves their final roster cuts some expected some not expected so that is what we're deep diving in today's video make sure to smash that like and subscribe button for your boy as it is the easiest and best way to support the channel thank you all so much as always and stay tuned for continu continued and consistent coverage on all things Mets all season long post game shows every single day we're going to be having new segments as well I'm very excited to unveil with you all awesome guests and then some so make sure you're on the lookout but let's talk about this because before we get into the obvious one headline by Mark Vientos, which goes directly in hand with the J.D. Martinez signing, let's first discuss what we haven't talked about on the channel, and that was the little moves like Shintaro Fujinami being sent down to AAA, a guy that I'm very excited for this season, but we know that he's very much a wild thing straight out of Major League, so he's going to start the year there in AAA to hone in on his, on his command and also work more in the Mets system with the type of analytics group that they have, even not just at the Major League level, but even at the AAA level, it's very different different than what it was when Steve Cohen first bought the team. So trying to get him acclimated with everything involved with what the Mets currently have on hand with to get the best out of their pitchers. Hopefully after Shintaro again finds his command a bit more it won't be long before he's called up. I mean at the end of the day there's a reason why he signed a $3.5 million deal. David Stearns views highly of him. Jeremy Heffer, Mets pitching coach, thinks he has all-star closer potential. Lots of hype there and for good reason just after his last spring start where you know he really struggled with his command. It became abundantly clear that the Mets have a lot of great options for their bullpen to start the season that's a good problem to have and he was one of those few guys that still has thankfully minor league options on his contract that the Mets are able to take advantage of the same way that they did with Southpaw Nate Lavender earlier this spring for example but then you see guys as well whether it's the Trace Thompsons of the world whether it's the Jose Iglesias's they've all been sent down as well basically everyone that you assume would be sent down that were say you know minor league signings spring invites they've all been sent down Jose Iglesias who had a phenomenal spring for the Mets batting right around 300, high OPS too, was going gap to gap, looking strong at the glove. He's a guy that is anticipated to stay in the organization. He said himself he's leaning more to stay in the organization versus opting out to go elsewhere. So hopefully Iglesias is a guy the Mets can call upon if need be because of injuries to say infield options off their bench for the regular season. But all in all, I'm happy that he looks like as of now he's going to stay in the organization. Also as a former teammate of J.D. Martinez is during their time, of course, there at least with the Boston Red Sox. So he was pretty hyped up about that sign too and speaking of JD Martinez he had his first official presser that we saw yesterday which was so awesome I mean he is a true hitting savant I loved how clear cut he was as well he was asked why didn't he say sign with the San Francisco Giants and his answer was you know it's not a great ballpark for home run hitters like me if I just hit 20 bombs at 260 the average you're going to start calling me washed when I'm not so I'd much rather go to City Field uh, you know, uh, pardon me City Field where we know the type of park we have and it's true if you look at his expected numbers he would have had north of just under expected 60 home runs in City Field last year if he had 650 plate appearances there. So yes, City Field is not necessarily known as a hitter's park. However, for J.D. Martinez, one of the best sluggers in the game, he hits the ball high, far, and goes opposite field or dead center. And it's definitely a more favorable park for him versus, say, going there at Oracle or San Fran playing half the year. So very happy that that ended up falling in the Mets' lap in that way a little bit too. Pete Alonso is a heavy advocate for his. But now let's get on to Mark Vientos. Because as we know, Mark Vientos was very frustrated with the initial news of J.D. Martinez. I think it was ridiculous that the media even asked him his thoughts on the move right away because you knew exactly how he would respond as a young and experienced player that was hoping to have a starting role on the roster. Now that's taken away from a veteran, naturally. Love that as soon as J.D. Martinez comes to the Mets, he puts his arm around Mark Vientos, their MVP. They're having good conversation. And again, J.D. was an, a guy, too, that was without a position early on in his career, but known for the big power in his bats. So he can relate a lot with Mark Vientos, and I think not only him being a heading savant, but just understanding what it takes to win, understanding the 
those growths, those pains as a young slugger is going to bode so well as a potential mentor for Mark Vientos and others on the roster this year. But again, being a mentor means you have to be around said player, at least to a degree, and things might get a little bit tricky now because Mark Vientos has been sent down to AAA. Yes, even after J.D. Martinez is going to start the year in the minors for at least the first 10 to 15 days, right? So basically the first two weeks of the season, J.D. Martinez will be ramping up because he didn't have a normal spring train. He said himself, I need to ramp up my body. This is what I need to do. So I'm going to start the year in AAA for the first week or two. It sucks. I would like to start the year in opening day at City Field, but I also don't want to risk injury either. And that's a smart thing for JDM who does have back issues and it's something that the Mets will be monitoring all throughout the year. So he's going to start the year in AAA, but who's going to be starting at third base? It is, in fact, going to be, yes, Mark Vientos. Mark Vientos was sent down today in a little bit of surprising move to some, knowing, okay, Mark Evie could have been in that D8 spot up until JD is called up, but there is valid reasoning for it. And Zach Short surprisingly has cracked the roster. So first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Zach Short. Again, when talk about a guy that earned his spot. He certainly did that this spring. And for the people arguing, why not Jose Iglesias or someone else? Well, here's the thing. Zach Short, 28 years of age, a journeyman in the MLB, been in the minor leagues plenty. This guy is phenomenal with the glove and he can play pretty much any infield position. That, number one, is why the Mets are very appealed to someone like him. Defensive diversity, ability there, whether it's third base, whether it's shortstop, second base, wherever you can put him, and he's going to comfortably handle the position. And two, the bat to ball skills that we saw in spring was very strong, too. He had a grand slam a couple days ago, which was sick. We saw against the Detroit Tigers, if I'm not mistaken. We also see that Zach Short is a guy that this spring batted just around or just under 270 with a home run, a bunch of RBIs, and an 840 or so OPS. So a lot to like there for Zach Short. Again, not a guy that you're expecting to have a crazy impact on the Mets this year, but a guy that you can rightfully argue earned his keep. And let's not forget, you know when the Mets had interest in Gio Urshela, you know, a third base option that bats from the right side of the plate, that was also appealing for the Mets here, especially Brett Beatty goes through highs and lows, which will inevitably happen throughout the year. Zach Short is more of a guaranteed option on the defensive end, say as a defensive uh, late replacement later in the game, or just based on matchups if you want that bat in there, maybe because you don't love the matchup for Beatty. Even though I want Beatty to see as many at-bats, as many pitches left to ready as possible and the guy isn't going to be performing well especially that's where it makes even more sense to bring Zach Short in so there's a lot to like about Zach Short and furthermore unfortunately his grandmother did pass this morning right around the time that he found out the news so it was a whirlwind for him unfortunately and again my condolences to him and his entire family during this time of grieving but I mean talk about such an awesome story too who else is cutting onions out here seriously when I saw that he got choked up when he was asked about it as well but it was like a bittersweet moment too because unfortunately you while that happened and it was expected thing for uh, to happen his family this was also big news as well so unfortunately one terrible thing happens and one great thing happens for Zach Short to start the day the real one of a morning for him I can only imagine what the emotions are like but Zach Short we are rooting for you big time big dog excited to see what you could do here on the bench for the amazings and now Mark Vientos this is a big one guys and gals so why was Mark Vientos sent down here it's a great question right well Marky V as we know is someone that is going to be getting reps mainly at DH and the third base position. And while you can argue, why wouldn't you have him up basically until you're going to send him down? I think the proper counter is the following. Why have Mark Vientos up on the roster, him potentially off to a very hot start, and then as soon as J.D. Martinez returns, he's taking his job away from him. You know, you want to talk about a guy that's already fluctuating with his young confidence in Vientos. I think you have potential risk of hurting his confidence more if he starts the year with the team knowing for certain he's going to be sent down. And the reason why he's going to be sent down is because one, the Mets know he is a defensive liability at the hot corner currently, and two, they want what is best for his development. And truthfully, as much as I would like the idea of him on the roster splitting time with Beatty, if you're basing things on development alone and trying to get the best out of these young players, it's not going to co come in a platoon setting. We've already seen that with Vientos, platooning DH, and that's why he's fluctuated with his production so much. So I think it's very important for Vientos to get as many at-bats as possible, no matter the position that he's playing. Thank you. He's not going to get that with the Mets, even though it was for a short sample size. Why kill his confidence? I mean, watch you have like a 1,000 OPS the first week or two with the Mets. JDM comes up. He gets sent down after off to a hot start, and then it impacts his play in AAA because he's like, I was playing great. They still won't keep me on the roster. How does that make any sense? So I understand the frustration. David Stern said it himself today. He understands the frustration, but ultimately, how does he respond to this will be the big thing. I think he will respond well. I think his talk with JDM certainly didn't hurt things, and ultimately, I fully 
fully expect us to see Mark Vientos back on the roster this year. Whether it's sooner than later, we will soon find out, hopefully. But no less, Mark Vientos, we will see him start the year now in AAA. Chi Man Choi was a guy that I've told many of you who have been following the channel. Firm believer that he was going to crack that last bench spot prior to the JDM news. Now that the JD Martinez signing has officially happened, Chi Man Choi, who hasn't had a great spring by any stretch, but again, brings a lot as a backup first baseman for Pete Alonso. Very strong with the glove. High exit velo. There are qualities to Chi Man Choi's games that are that are appealing that certainly would make sense. And I can guarantee you he would be on the roster if it wasn't for JDM signing and being that guy that can take up those reps in the DH position, even if it's not to start the season, right? So Chi Man Choi is not going to be making the Mets roster, so we will see if he stays in the minor leagues. I do believe he's on a split contract where you know he's making 35k per month that he's in AAA, or he's making 3.5 mil if he cracked the open eighty opening day roster which he did not so very interested to see what happens with Chi Man Choi if he stays in the organization that's even a question or not but certainly again another option to have there for AAA to call upon if need be this season so we talk about Chi Man Choi we talk about Mark Vientos we talk about Zach Short is there anything I'm missing oh yeah DJ Stewart DJ Stewart is currently on the roster expected to make the team while having an underwhelming spring too but the Mets aren't making it official because they're making it known that they're considering players outside of the organization still whether that's someone that is waived you know that's uh, dfa'd or you know in that waiver wire for an opposing team that the mets could pick up or if it's going to be a situation where they sign a free agent like a guy they have been tagged to that michael k even recently said over the past day or so the mets still have a level of interest in at their price point just like jdm and that is jordan montgomery so keep an eye on the monty sweepstakes hopefully those pick up when we find an answer to answer soon it appears the mets are still involved in that market i'm not going to get my hopes up but the same way that i wasn't going to get my hopes up about jdm and then i see signs a contract with a bunch of deferred payments who knows what could happen with jordan montgomery if he has any inkling to want to come back to new york and this time play with queens instead of being the bronx and a reunion there with the yankees but Rest, rest assured, the Mets are still involved in the market. That's why they're not committing to DJ Stewart. And I have a feeling that DJ Stewart will be sent down to AAA sooner rather than later once the Mets figure out what exactly they want to do with that final roster spot. So DJ Stewart, again, while he has pop, he has potential there, I can see why the Mets are maybe prioritizing a better fit for the organization, whether it's a guy that's more of a position of need that they could pick up, or especially externally in the Frazier market, a starting pitcher like Jordan Montgomery. Certainly, would not hurt this rotation i would be all for it i was advocate a heavy advocate of uh monty's all off season long and finally st staying on the pitching topic let's talk briefly about the bullpen it's going to come down to two guys and there's three left sean reed foley michael tonkin johan ramirez johan ramirez was acquired from the white Sox this past off season for a literally bag of baseballs and he has had a phenomenal spring electric stuff lots of like there of course very exciting nice acquisition by david stearns there michael tonkin ate just under 90 innings for the Braves last year, we're right around a four-year Ray. Right? Very impressive. Again, a guy that can eat multiple innings for you anytime out there. And that's a ref similar profile. And, you know, David Stearns put a heavy emphasis on wanting to make sure you don't have much duplicates in your bullpen, giving different looks. So that will certainly play a factor into their evaluation on what guys make the most sense for them in, say, different roles so you don't have too many guys in the same type of spot, same type of position, rather. But SRF, as we know, has been dealing with an injury this spring. So for those reasons, I think he's slightly on the outside looking in with Michael Tonkin and Johan Ramirez leading the way as things currently stand for those final bullpen spots. So the downside naturally is whoever does get caught here has the ability to potentially be picked up elsewhere, which wouldn't shock me. All these guys have been impressive to a degree this spring. Tonkin and Ramirez at a higher level because they've had more volume that we've seen and they both look very sharp. And I would actually be surprised if those aren't the two that cracked the bullpen in the end because of SRF and the injury stats he unfortunately faced this spring. He's also been cleared by the Mets before through waivers and went down to AAA. So I think you could even argue maybe he's the best arm option for them to consider actually staying in the organization where he will not be picked up elsewhere. Another thing to evaluate that we, of course, will be following along here uh, this spring as we have a double header today, a split squad game at the time of recording this. Not sure if coverage will be coming out. As I said, I'm out of town, but rest assured as we get ready for the regular season, so much game coverage. You guys have, you guys and gals have no idea. And of course, I want to know your initial reactions down below to all the latest Mets news and updates. Mark Vientos sent down. Chi Man Choi sent down. Hopefully stays in the organization. Jose Iglesias sent down. Zach Short is staying with the team. DJ Stewart currently staying with the team, but that may change in the coming days, hours. Who knows? 
and plenty more. David Stearns is doing everything that he needs to do to get this roster ready for opening day, and I'm really excited to see how it's all going to officially shake out as we just have another move or two to be had here. But for the most part, we know what we're getting. So Mets fans, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like, do you agree, disagree with the Mets roster cuts and moves that they're doing? And as I mentioned about the bullpen, it's a good problem to have. As I said, all spring long, Mets fans, this is what David Stearns was building for. You want more options that you know what to do with, and thankfully they are now in a position for their pen to do just that with guys in the minor leagues that they can call upon with options that will have a positive impact on the bullpen throughout the course of the 162 season. So that's it for me. Appreciate you guys and gals watching as always. Let me know your thoughts down below. Shout out Bet US as always for being an amazing sponsor on the channel. Make sure you click the link down below. That way you too get 125% boost with your first three deposits for all your sports betting needs. I'll talk to you guys and gals again real soon. Let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.